इधर नौशीन पता चला क्या है कोट है सो इंग्लिश में भी कोट है उर्दू में भी कोट है द स्टाइल ऑफ दिस उर्दू लेसन हैजंट चेंज्ड मच इन 20 इयर्स चलो अब देखो ये क्या है छतरी है छतरी क्या चीज है अंब्रेला बारिश हो तो हम निकालते हैं टेक्निक्स आर ट्रेडिशनल रिसोर्सेज ऑलमोस्ट ऑल होम मेड मेरा नाम असलम है मैं ब्रैडफोर्ड में रहता हूं मेरी उम्र आवाज बंद 12 साल है हां शाबाश वी हैव टू टीच देम हाउ टू रीड व्हेन यू वी टीच देम हाउ टू रीड वी हैव टू बी ट्रेडिशनल आई थिंक but with community languages growing hugely in popularity, Urdu is now the fourth most popular MFL choice. Some teachers want to modernize. Il y a du vent. Il y a du brouillard. Très bien. Numéro numéro six. Mohamed. Il fait chaud. Mohamed Umar recognizes the value of traditional methods but feels that Urdu teachers can and should introduce techniques now common in the teaching of other MFLs. Vanessa is an advanced skills teacher at the school. She has been teaching here for several years and everybody has been praising her styles of teaching. Now, I again want to be able to improve my own style of teaching and I felt she is probably one of the better people to be observing. And I feel I learned quite a bit this morning that uh, will um, help me improve my teaching. I need you to have a look for a pattern, okay? There's three different groups of weather types. Try to see whether you can see a pattern. Alors, écoute et répète. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. I mean, the topic we covered, I don't think, really mattered as such. It was uh, um, the extra style of teaching, um, keeping everybody engaged, keeping the interest there, and more importantly, keeping the overall control. And I think that, again, would help me right the way through. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Il fait chaud en anglais? En anglais? It's hot, it's hot. The weather's really hot. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Just to remember, froid. Okay. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Okay. Répète. Il fait chaud. Il fait chaud. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Excellent. In the past, I've also observed not just language teachers, but uh, teachers of maths, um, science, religious studies, other subjects as well, to try and get an idea of them, purely to try and improve my own teaching. I was teaching a, a lesson on, on the weather with, with a year eight um, class. And basically the whole point of him coming in to, to do a peer observation was to look at different strategies, looking how I start the lesson, for example, the meeting and greeting at the door. Looking at the different activities and looking at the pace of the lesson too. Also how he could adapt the resources that I had produced in, in his lesson. We talked about three patterns. Il fait, il y a, and il. Okay. Can you tell me a couple of with il fait? Il fait chaud. Okay. What about with il y a? Il y a what about with il? Il Fantastic. He was also interested in looking at how the group work worked and how he could put that into practice in his lesson. Okay. He's become more and more confident um, and, and also we've worked together, for example, looking at a display in the classroom, which I think is absolutely vital to have. So he's modelled his display on the one that you can find in the French department, so being very visual, having lots of keywords on the wall and so on. And obviously his interest in technology is developing more and more, so he's using um, the interactive whiteboard a lot. I think I gained quite a bit uh, from the session this morning. Um, uh, initially, the way um, uh, a new topic was introduced, I thought it was fantastic. You're going to make your own weather forecast. You're going to be work working in twos. We say, do you good? And secondly, the tone of voice changing it, I think that helped a lot as well. And then thirdly, something that I haven't done myself for quite a while now, choosing just the voice to repeat whatever is going on in the classroom. Five sentences that you can, by all means, write on this. However, once you've done that, my friend Chloe, 
What do you think weather presenters do? They present the weather. I think that again has um, brought back some of the ideas I had initially, but would have probably uh, fallen to the back of my head now. Okay. Bonjour, je m'appelle Monsieur Omar. Bonjour. À Calais, il y a du bon. À Nice, il fait froid. Thank you. Overall, I think there was uh, a lot of uh, goodness that um, has come out of the Nessa. Only when I am going to go through that with Vanessa, I think that will um, help me try to uh, in elaborating that slightly further. Hi, Mohammed. So uh, Hi. you came to observe my lesson th this morning. Um, I did. Would you like to discuss what what, what you saw, uh, particular aspects of uh, of the lesson? And the thing uh, I liked probably the was from the lesson was uh, the way you worked with the. Um, uh, the mini whiteboards and then getting them to come out and uh, basically present the weather. Mm, uh, mm. I mean, the other idea. You seem to enjoy that, didn't they? Uh, definitely. Mm. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think um, the other ideas I uh, used at times in the past um, and uh, they worked and they just dropped, fall into the back of my mind. But this is something that uh, uh, I would probably like to try myself as well. Mm. The, the next bit we'll be talking about what we do in certain type of weather. Mm -hmm. So next lesson, though I will be reinforcing the weather, I will also be introducing um, hobbies and what we do if it rains and, or if it snows and so on. Again, this is a kind of activity that you could easily adapt to, to your mm. language, changing the map of France, obviously, to map of Pakistan, mm. and uh, changing the text too. So all these resources, are, you know, I think, really live um, adaptable to, to, mm. to your teaching. Uh, absolutely. Um, right, so we want to be able to understand how to say different types of weather in Urdu, okay? That is what we're going to be looking at this lesson. Now, before we move on to that, what you have in front of you is a worksheet that I'd like you to look at. Try to break up each word, okay? The first one is done for you. All you need to do is look at each word and write the letters separately as an example, okay? And then think about how you might say that word for the picture, okay? That should not take us more than two minutes, okay? It is a bit strange, um, but it's quite nice to to, um, to see a variety of, uh, of materials being used um, and seeing that he's taken on board the, the advice um, that was given to him, so, so that's really good. And pupils are obviously um, doing well on task and stuff, so it's good. Hawa chal rahi hai. Hawa chal rahi hai. Hawa chal rahi hai. Hawa chal rahi hai. okay. Department head Isabel supports Mohammed's new ideas. Hi. Hi, Isabel. How do you think the lesson went? Um, I think it was uh, it was okay. Um, I could have uh, improved on certain things. Um, I tried to print this uh, in colour initially, but there was a problem with the colour printer, so I couldn't get any, everything uh, printed uh, early enough. But um, overall, I think the lesson uh, was quite good. When I do lesson observation, um, uh, I can see that there is a difference in, in the teaching and learning. In the teaching, obviously, uh, through the resources produced, um, but it has an effect on the learning of the children because they are more engaged, uh, more motivating, because um, our pupils are very visual and kinesthetic. Uh, they like touching, they like moving around the classroom. So coming to the board and doing an interactive activity seem much more interesting than sitting down and having an input from the teacher from the front, in a way. I will be choosing some people to come out here and present the weather, okay? Firstly then, Nabil and Sonia, could you come out then, please? Okay? Right, so who will say the weather? Today, Karachi, there is a lot of Okay, Shabash, what else? Two more. In the other hand, from the lesson I've also observed in a much more traditional way, the children have got the constant audio background. I mean, the two other colleagues constantly speak in Urdu to them. Uh, it's a full target language, um, a buffer. 
you go in the classroom and it's all in the target language from the time you come in till the time you come out. Doop to ampele dek chuke hain, lekin isme kuch aur hai. Agar bahut doop hoti hai, to kya hota hai? Now, in the teaching of modern languages nowadays, yes, so teaching of the target language is encouraged as much as you can, but sometimes you've got to refer to the English because it's where problem of behavior might occur if you constantly talk in the target language. If you finish, could you put your pens down and please? So I know that you, you have finished. Basically. I think a follow-up could be to take them in the ICT room to uh, do a nice display work on it. Yes, yes, we could do that. That would, uh, that would be quite helpful. Um, so they could have some more colors and uh, um, write their own with a report on a certain day. Mm, uh, that's a very good idea. We could perhaps print off the, uh, the colored reports and then uh, fill in the uh, Urdu signs, perhaps by hand. Where Mohammed hit something of a brick wall in his mission to modernize Urdu teaching is resources. I felt uh, there were limited resources available. For example, wanting to do a listening activity with um, uh, a group of pupils, uh, there weren't any listening uh, tapes available. Uh, during my PGC year, I had to spend quite a bit of time trying to produce those myself. Um, secondly, using um, resources of the internet, there was very little, if not hardly anything available at all. So uh, again, if I wanted to uh, bring in a better fine city, I felt uh, I was having to do a lot of work, uh, um, a lot of additional work myself. And teachers who follow a more traditional method suffer in the same way. When I started, there were no books available in the market. But now there are a few, but still, you can't, they, they can't satisfy our needs. We can't get all curriculum needs from there. There are some topics, but we have to mold them, we have to uh, produce our own. Like today, you have seen my sheet. I have done it on the computer myself at home. The answer for Mohammed has been to adapt resources used by teachers of other MFLs. You need to guess what the word is in Urdu, but using the English letters, OK? Who'd like to have a go first? Put your hand up, please, if you'd like to guess the first letter. Sanya. Achia. Let's see if there are any. No, A. Sorry, Sanya. Um, do you think there might be a B? Yes, there is a B. How do these new ideas go down with other teachers? New approaches, I appreciate that, but to some extent, when uh, the GCSE exams and A-levels come, A-level courses at that time, you need some um, traditional type of uh, uh, teaching as well, um, some vocabulary, some, I mean, then we have to go through that, yeah. ICT, it's okay, the games and all that, that's the only the end part uh, when you have to check upon the kids how much they have learned. So that, that is good, but not, we can't spend all lesson on that, the only one or two activities. I think we have to go side by side with ICT skills and some traditional uh, teaching as well. We, we can't rely just on one.